um, first of all, congratulations on the film. Really Thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you. Excellent. Um, I just wondered, in in terms of your, uh, it's obviously quite a lot of horror movie references in there, and you've obviously taken a lot of re inspiration from horror movies. Which which ones in particular, and what kind of uh, what types of horror movies did you? Well, zombies, right? So Night, yeah. Night of the Living Dead's one of them. You have sure. to know your zombie movies in order mm. to make a zombie movie. Yeah. Um, so all of them: Night, Dawn, Day, <laughs> even Land. But um, <laughs> I think actually one of the big ones for me was The Fog. It's that we always talk about is John Carpenter meets John Hughes, and in, and specifically, it's kind of like if you took the characters from The Breakfast Club and dropped them into the plot of The Fog. That's <laughs> basically the movie. Let's say, hopefully, not the remake, though. Not the <laughs> remake. No, no. And then, so, how, with the horror movie thing, how, how scary do you think you can get with a kid's film? And, and where, where do you tell that line? Well, it's pretty, you can be pretty scary. Kids are pretty dark creatures, to be honest. You know, much <laughs> darker than adults. But um, we, didn't, we chose not to, we didn't do gore, you know? Like, we didn't, in fact, this mm. isn't a horror movie for kids. Right. We, we didn't set out to just scarier you know there's it's actually more of a sort of a roller coaster adventure movie it's like an episode like, of Scooby Doo but good yeah <laughs> <laughs> the goonies you know like with a bit more of a sort of sam raimi kind of you know kinetic kind of feel to it because it, it felt to me like adam of a like a weird or a creepy vibe than a scary vibe yeah, yeah i think you know a lot of people say oh you made a horror movie for kids and the purpose of a horror movie is to scare you and quite often they are unresolved endings or, or dark, sad endings. And that's not what we were going for. Mm. We were going for... We were using horror movie conventions, but we wanted to have fun with them. And actually what we did um, throughout a lot of the story is set something up so you think you know what's going on and then turn it on its head and do something different with it. So do you think more than, more than anything it would maybe make kids want to discover horror movies later on rather than this being the the one to the gateway yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, gate. <laughs> <laughs> the gateway movie i yes why not i mean i got into horror movies when i when i was younger i'm not advocating of course kids <laughs> kids love scary stuff they do they, they do. want to see it they want to see it you know parents want, don't want them to but they want to see it and there's always that battle between yeah. the two and it seems to me that right at the heart of the story with uh kind of Agatha's backstory that we find out towards the end, that's almost the darkest thing in the movie when, mm. when you, you know, get to the mm. core of it. So. And we will not speak of this because we do not want to uh, spoil it. No, no, no. But how, how do you kind of get around these these moments, these darker moments? Is it, is it a case of finding the humour? Partly, the but actually that, that, what you're talking about in particular, isn't funny. And, no. and, and the subject matter there is quite serious and we didn't want to shy away from that. So mm. we were just very careful. We tried to do it responsibly. But we, it is a, it is, it is a very dark thing that we, that, that happened, um, and so it is, and actually, it's the dramatic heart of the movie. Yeah. Um, so we don't never wanted to shy away from that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And now you've both worked at different animation houses in the past and different animation styles. Mm -hmm. How did you find working with stop motion? At, is it? I'm never I'm sure. Is it Laker or Laika? Laika. At Laika. Yeah. So how was it yeah. working at Laika and how was it working it, with the stop motion? It was cool doing stop motion. I'd done it in the past, like, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I used to do it. And coming back to it, it was really amazing, actually, because Laika have really moved the medium forward. I mean, they've got a lot of amazing people there that have been working in, in stop motion for years and they're just really great mm. traditional stop motion people. But they've also got this amazing new technology plugged into it. So you're really getting, it's a real hybrid actually, it's a lot mm. of, it's a lot different. They're pushing the boundaries and, mm. you know, I worked on Coraline, um, mm. so, I, and also, you know, I've been in stop motion now for quite a few years um, in the pre-production side. I worked on Corpse Bride um, and actually a lot of these people that are working at Leica now, I've kind of grown up in the industry with them. So it's, there's a real family kind of feeling there. And, um, and, and yeah, and the, the crew is at the top of their game. Mm. And so you, you've got some really fantastically designed characters um, and also some really amazing vocal voice performances. Um, how much did the voice performances kind of inform the characters or was it the other way around that the kind of the actors came and tried to fit? It was the other way around actually. We designed all the characters first so we knew what they looked like. Yeah. Uh, and then we had a short list of actors that could possibly fulfill those roles. Uh, and then we started playing the voices against yeah. those designs. But we did we did something slightly different on this. I mean, it, all too often, I think, um, the design of a character in animation can emulate some... 
celebrity persona, mm. and we're not interested in that. Mm. So having the designs pre-exist was one thing, but it also enabled us to cast against type. So we have Christopher Mintz Plass as a yeah. bully, for example. Um, it's quite liberating in a way. We, we made some really odd choices, but they work so well because it's just about their vo vocal quality. Yeah, And there are some really, like, Odd looking carrots. So I almost thought that the, the stranger they were dimensionally, the more yeah. interesting they were to look at. Yeah. And then you've got quite a lot of like unique. It, it was a really unique looking film. Yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. Was, that a, was that a conscious choice? Did you want it to yeah. be something fresh and original? Yes. It also looks yeah. very different from Coraline in the way that yeah. the small town and even yes. the way that it's lit. Yeah, yeah, it's a different set of design principles, but we wanted overall we wanted to hold a mirror up to the world, you know. So all of these shapes and all of the shapes of these people, or these odd sort of character designs, are, they are reflected in reality. It's observational. Yeah, they're, they're quite grotesque in a way. And our character designer actually, her stuff is is, is kind of brutally. Uh, unhinged, if you like, and that's that's really what we we wanted. I love the fact, for example, that in in this world, the beautiful people are ugly just <laughs> as much as, yeah. as the ugly people. You know, everyone is is no one escapes her gaze. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's excellent. Um, thanks a lot, and cool. uh, good luck with the movie. Thanks a lot. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah.